Welcome back everybody, Patrick here moving on to another velocity question. So a plane has an air velocity of 700 kilometers per hour at a bearing of 285 degrees. The resultant ground velocity is 600 kilometers per hour south 85 degrees west. Find the wind velocity. So this question is a little bit unique. Usually we're given the wind velocity. This time we're going to have to find it. Now whenever I get questions like this, I like to put a general diagram of where we have the plane velocity or the air velocity, then the plane gets taken somewhere by the wind, and we end up with the resultant ground velocity. So in general, this is what's usually happening. So Notice in this case, we have to find this wind velocity here. We're given the plane velocity or the air velocity, and we're given the resultant ground velocity as well. We got to find this vector, this uh, wind velocity. So we got to get a speed and we have to get a direction as well. So notice since we're given the plane velocity and the resultant velocity, we can connect them tail to tail because the plane velocity resultant ground velocity, they're always connected tail to tail. So let's start off by making a diagram like that. So let's start off with the air velocity. The plane is going 700 kilometers per hour at a bearing of 285 degrees. So let's maybe draw a compass here. So we got north, we got uh, east, south, and west. Now, whenever they give you a bearing just in degrees without any sort of direction, south, north, west, east, basically what's happening is you're starting from the north and then you are going clockwise by this many degrees. So notice that from here to here, that is 90 degrees, 180 degrees, 270 degrees, and then 285 is going to be somewhere in between 270 and 360. So a bearing of 285 degrees, that's like here. Right, so up to this point, it's 270 degrees. So if this is 285 degrees, then that means that this angle here is 285 degrees minus 270, which is 15 degrees. So once I have that drawn, I'll erase this circle here just so we got less in the diagram to worry about. So notice that this vector that we just drew is this. It's the plane velocity. So let's just label that P. And now let's draw the uh, resultant ground velocity and notice that the resultant ground velocity and the plane velocity they're going to be attached tail to tail as we mentioned before so the ground velocity is going to start from here as well and we're told that the ground velocity is 600 kilometers per hour and it's south 85 degrees west so it's starting at the south and then 80 it goes to the left 85 degrees. So that's going to be somewhere here. Right? So this angle here is 85 degrees. Well, if this angle is 85 degrees and we just look at this portion here, notice between the west, the south, that's 90 degrees. We know that this angle here is going to be 5 degrees, like that. So Again, this is the plane uh, or the air velocity. So this is 700 kilometers per hour. And then this here is the resultant. And we are told that it is 600. And so now we have enough information to figure out what that wind velocity is going to be. Now, before we draw the wind velocity vector, what I like to do personally is at the end of these vectors, I like to draw another compass usually. Because usually we're gonna have to be using these angles. So a compass there and a compass here. Let's make this a little more straight. So 
notice that we can figure out what these angles are here by the Z pattern. Notice that this line and this line are parallel. And this is a line going through two parallel lines, so we can use the Z pattern. So if this is 15 degrees, that means that this is 15 degrees as well. Notice that if this is 85 degrees, same thing here, this is 85 degrees as well, because this line and this line are parallel too. So we're just using the Z pattern. This is 85 degrees, this is five degrees. So now what we can do is we can draw the wind velocity vector. Now the wind velocity vector, notice that the tail of it, it starts at the head of the plane vector, which would be here. And then the head of the wind vector connects at the head of the resultant vector. So the wind velocity vector would look something like this. It would almost be going downwards like that. Now this might not be necessarily to scale, the 700, the 600, but once we start solving for angles, we'll be able to make a more accurate diagram. But let's just keep it like that for now. So the wind velocity vector, the tail is here. And then if you could see down here, let's actually erase uh, this compass for now. The head of that wind velocity vector is down here. So this is the wind velocity. So what we have to do is we have to figure out the speed of this vector. We also have to find out the direction. So notice that the wind velocity vector is making an angle with the plane vector. So we can use that angle to figure out what the direction is. And then notice for the speed, we have a triangle here we have the two sides of the triangle and we have the angle in between those two sides because this is 15 degrees, this is five degrees. So we know that this whole angle here is gonna be 20 degrees. So let me erase the five and 15. And then I'm just gonna put 20 degrees here. Right, so once you're working with the question further and further, you can start erasing parts of the compass and you can start adding angles together to form a triangle. So notice that if I take this triangle here, let's maybe draw it on the side without all these compasses and stuff. So we have a side of 700, we got a side of 600, we have a side of 20 degrees, and we are solving for the speed, the wind speed over here, and we're gonna solve for this data here to get the direction. So you could pretty much forget about this and we're just simply solving this triangle now. So let's start off by finding out what that wind speed is. So notice we could use cosine law. So doing it here, we can say that this side squared is equal to those two sides squared minus two times 600 times 700 times cos of 20. So notice we're using the cosine law. We have to use the cosine law because this is not a right angle triangle. Well, it might be, we don't know that, but uh, you always wanna assume that it's not just to be safe. So we're using the cosine law to solve for that opposite side of that contained Angle. And when you do this calculation here, you input this right side into your calculator, square root it, you would end up getting a speed for the wind of 246 kilometers per hour. So we have figured out what the speed of this uh, wind vector is. But now we need the direction, so we got to solve for this data, or if we look at this triangle, this data here. So notice that since we have this side over here now, we can use sine law to solve for this theta. So we can say sine of theta over the opposite side 600 is equal to sine of 20 over this side here, which we just solved for, which was 240 
6. And then when you cross multiply, you isolate for that sine theta and then inverse sine that whole right side, you would end up getting an angle of 56.5 degrees. So that means, going back to this diagram here, this is 56.5 degrees. So to state the direction, let's actually redraw this over here. So drawing this compass, the wind velocity is going this way. And notice that this angle here, it's going to be 15 degrees. We know that this angle is 15 degrees. We got that from the Z pattern before, plus 56.5 degrees, which would give us what? 71.5 degrees? So this here is 71.5 degrees. Now, if this is 71.5 degrees, that means that this here is 18. 0.5 degrees because it's 90 minus 71.5. So this direction we can state in two different ways. We can say that it's 71.5 degrees south of east, right? This is east, this is south. So we can say that the direction is east 71.5 degrees south, or we can say that it's south 18.5 degrees east. Personally, I like this one better. I always like the north and south to go first, but a lot of teachers aren't too picky and you can put either one. So that there is the direction of that wind velocity vector. So final answer, what is the wind velocity? Well, it's the speed, the speed we solved here 246 kilometers per hour. And then the direction, since it's a vector, we need a direction as well. It's south 18.5 degrees east. South 18.5 degrees east. And that there is your final answer to this question. So pretty tough in my opinion especially drawing this diagram, we gotta use the Z pattern a bunch of times in order to get certain angles that we need. And then um, combining certain angles as well in order to use that cosine law to solve for that speed. Pretty tricky question. But like the diagram I had before, you always wanna draw that general diagram of a plane of the wind and then the resultant. You always want to make sure that your diagram is in this format, right? Where, for example, the tail of the wind connects with the head of the plane, or the head of the wind connects with the head of the resultant, or the tail of the resultant connects with the tail of the plane. It always has to be in that sort of format. It's super important in order to get your angles correct. But once you have that diagram, you see what you're given in the question, you figure out what you're trying to find, then uh, it's not too bad. So drawing the diagram, making the triangle, we get this final wind velocity.